sure that we're not leaving any stone unturned, we decided to come back to this area. Volunteers are not giving up hope in the search for a missing Chula Vista mother of three. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Alicia Summers. Steve has the night off. Dozens searched in an East County trail today for Maya Miliette, who went missing three months ago this week. Chula Vista police have not named a suspect or any new leads in her disappearance. News 8's Heather Hope has more from today's search. Yes, dozens showed up on this trail in Rancho San Diego from everything with walkie talkies to walking sticks to look for Maya Miliete, now gone for over three months. In their search efforts, they're hoping that they get some type of evidence. It's a very crucial period because it's been three months. Hiking through the thick brush in this Rancho San Diego trail off Campo Road. When we go down out into the field, we're all in a straight line. Um, at a safe distance apart, making sure that we're looking down to the side so that we cover the most region uh, very effectively. Liliana Burke is the Maya Miliete Search Warriors lead organizer who came prepared. We have color-coded hats. Our backpacks are easily res uh, recognizable. We have walkie-talkies. We have rock climbing gear in case any of us need to make a descent. Down to wearing snake guards to protect their legs, Burke created a detailed search map found from scanning a QR code. Burke says they chose this East County area to look for the 39 year old missing mother of three because someone reportedly last saw Maya's Lexus SUV in the area before she disappeared. So searchers came with ATVs and off road vehicles. And then we have drones and motorbikes covering a very, very vast area. Maya's sister and brother in law, Mary Chris and Richard Drouillet showed up to the search from their home in Riverside County. Travel two to three hours every single weekend. I spoke to the family on Maya's three month anniversary of her disappearance. We'll find her soon. We are still hoping. Maya's father in law said he too hopes they find Maya alive. We're still waiting. In Maya and husband Larry Miliete's neighborhood, surveillance audio captured six loud bangs on January 7th, the night Maya went missing after the couple reportedly had an argument. <laughs> the family will appear Monday on Dr. Phil. She's filling out paperwork for, with a divorce lawyer on the 7th and goes missing on the 8th. That's, that's correct. And the search for Maya continues. We have to just keep looking because May has to be somewhere. And the efforts to bring Maya home don't end today. Tomorrow there will be a march and a rally and vigil to take place at the Chula Vista Community Park starting about noon. Heather Hope, News 8. And as, as Heather just mentioned, the case will be featured on Dr. Phil this coming Monday. We're told the explosive new interview reveals never before her details surrounding the day Maya went missing. You can watch the entire interview on Dr. Phil Monday at 3 p.m. right here on CBS 8. Today in Balboa Park, a march for all San Diegans to stand up in solidarity against anti-Asian hate. We need to unlearn the biases that trap our thinking that make us believe that the other is the enemy. That anything that deviates from mainstream white culture is bad. The group Stop Asian Hate San Diego organized the march in response to a rash of violent and discriminatory acts against Asian Americans in recent months across the country. Today, Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs took the server for an hour challenge at Ponce's Mexican restaurant in Kensington. It's all part of her effort to push Congress to end the sub minimum wage for tipped workers. While California now has a $14 minimum wage for all workers, some states still have a tipped minimum wage as low as $2.13 an hour. We here in California know that it is not a question of our workers or our, our small businesses, but in fact that we can have a thriving small business restaurant industry with a standard minimum wage across the board. Jacobs is a co-sponsor of the Raise the Wage Act of 2021, which would raise the minimum wage nationwide for all workers to $15 an hour. Grab your stick and pads because roller hockey is back in Oceanside. The Tri-City Inline Hockey League skated back into the rink today with a special guest dropping the puck. News 8's Tim Blodgett got in on all that action. No ice required. After a year-long hiatus, the Tri-City Inline Hockey League has finally dropped the puck. Though hockey might be played on rinks of ice, on skates with wheels will certainly suffice. 
It's the first day on the roller rink for the Tri-City Inline Hockey League. Located in Oceanside, the league has been a chance for North County kids to shoot and score on wheels since 1993. While the rules of inline hockey are essentially the same on ice, the sport is considered much safer for kids. There is no checking required whatsoever. It doesn't matter if we have five-year-olds playing high schoolers or it's a professional roller hockey team. There is no checking uh, allowed whatsoever. Dimitri Demidov is a coach and board member for the TCIHL. He says that before the pandemic, the league had more than 100 players per season. But now, after a year of shutting down, Demidov is hoping to rebuild his organization. We had about 50% uh, fallout of players to either individual sports throughout that year, or some even moved out completely uh, of the state of California. Nice shot. But for those that stayed, the league resumed play today. The first puck dropped by inline hockey world champion and San Diego resident, Allison Era. So grab your stick and pads and head to Oceanside to play some puck in the San Diego sun. Tri-City Inline Hockey League is all about fun. Uh, we have uh, this big emphasis on it and always have. Uh, it's a developmental league, so we teach any newbies so they'll feel confident on skates and also feel confident in life. Tim Blodgett, News 8. Yeah, good skills out there, and the group picked a perfect day to restart activities with great weather all across the county. What can we expect for the rest of the weekend? Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Hi, Sean. Good evening, Alicia. What a day it was out there. A little bit cooler, it looks like, maybe tomorrow, but boy, I'll tell you, the temperature is just perfect for those inline skaters. And I got to tell you, man, that is not easy to do. Inline skating is fun to do on the boardwalk, but... To do that and chase around a puck is a whole different story. 70 was our high today. That's above average. We'll take it. Unfortunately, uh, we're trying to catch up on our rainfall totals. It looks like we're going into a pretty severe drought situation here. So unfortunately, the sun as nice as it is is causing a problem. Here's what we've got going, though. We do have a chance of some maybe light precipitation coming in. So tomorrow, a little bit stronger onshore flow. So the coastline will be cooler. Inland, uh, we'll see plenty of sunshine. The stronger onshore flow starts the work week and that is because of an area of low pressure to the north of us and that could trigger some light sprinkles uh, or rain here in San Diego. Looking at your forecast tomorrow, as I said, slightly cooler, 69, 65, 63. So we go below average as that trough moves through the Great Basin, and that cools us down here in San Diego as well. We go northwesterly with the flow. Tomorrow looking pretty good inland, but then the cool down comes, and it looks like Tuesday, the day where we could see some much cooler and chance of light rain. Alicia? It's been almost 24 hours since San Diego native Joe Musgrove made history for the Padres, pitching the franchise's first ever no hitter, but fans are still living in that moment. That was 53 years in the making. And there was an outpouring of support on social media for Musgrove, who went to Grossmont High School along with tons of fans. Here's one exchange. And this was a tweet from local beer maker Stone Brewing shortly after the game. It simply tagged Musgrove and said, you like IPAs? Musgrove didn't leave the North County Company hanging. Later, he responded, big fan. We'll see if anything comes from that exchange. And here's a cute one from the San Diego Sheriff's Department. This one is the department's canine Milo showing off his skills. The tweet says he is prepping for the big leagues after watching the no hitter. John Howard will have more reaction on Musgrove's big night coming up in sports. And at 630, hear from one of Musgrove's Grossmont High School coaches. News 8's LaMonica, LaMonica Peters will have that.